talk about primarily pin tumbler blocks, and these are locks you see 90% uh, of the time on a daily basis. Um, they're your key and knob cylinders, so that's a cylinder inside the knob of the key itself, excuse me, inside the knob of the handle itself. Um, also, they're your padlocks, same mechanism, and they're your, I don't know what kind of lock that is, but whatever, strange looking lock, but still, you can see, you know it's a pin tumbler lock if you look at, and you see a little pin uh, in the first uh, position on the keyway. So some quick terminology, the lock, this, this, the entire piece here is called the lock, obviously with the cylinder, the lock body, the lock housing. When I say that, I'm talking about this outer piece here. Inside is the plug, the part that the key actually goes into, um, and the plug is the keyway, and these little cuts going inside of the keyway are called boards, and boards only allow the correct key to be the keyway. This, this red pin you see here is, is called a key pin, it's called a key pin because it makes contact with the key when you put the key into the lock. Uh, up here is the driver pin, it makes contact with both the spring and the key pin. So key pin is red, uh, driver pin is blue, sometimes they're called bottom pins and top pins. We don't call them that because in Europe the locks are literally upside down. So you can see the confusion there. Uh, when the key pin rises to the correct height, uh, the point where the key pin and the driver pin meet is what we call the shear line. And that's once the, the pin is to the correct right height at the shear line, uh, the lock will open. So most locks have uh, more than one pin stack. If I were to take a uh, right cylinder, shear off the face of the cylinder, I would see this is just the first right, okay. pin stack. Most locks have about five pin stacks, up to seven, down to four, three. Um, but more, the majority of locks I here have five. So if I were to apply tension, I, I put my tension wrench into the lock. Uh, bottom of the keyway, so um, here's my cylinder, put it in the palm of my hand, take my tension wrench, put it at the bottom of the keyway, and I apply tension with my index here like this. If I were to do that without a pick or a key in hand, the uh, driver pin will bind at the shear line of running the lock open. Oh, okay. So with the correct key, raises the key pin up to the shear line, the lock will open. Pretty simple. So like I said, there we just saw the, the operation of just a single pin stack. Uh, most locks, like the lock I have in my hand, has about five pin stacks. And putting in the correct key raises all of the key pins up to the shear line, uh, allowing the lock to open. In this circumstance, the cuts or bits on the key, the actual cuts in the key is called bidding. The individual cuts are called bits. So in this circumstance, my bit is cut too low. And if I were to try to turn the lock, uh, the driver pin would be binding at the shear line there, preventing the lock from opening. In this circumstance, my bit is cut too high, and my key pin is now binding at the shear line, preventing the lock from opening. So in a perfect world, we are draw a line, a nice line down the center of the plug there. So this is a picture of, this is my lock. I just pull the plug out like this. This is what I would see. I would see one, two, three, four, five uh, holes that were drilled, um, and they would have the, the pins inside those holes. So this is this part of the lock here. Um, I would draw a line down the center. There would be no difference or no delta between the center of my line and the center of each one of these drill holes. And all of my pins would bind at the same time, like you see in this picture. Um, this would make manipulating the lock open, um, I think, impossible. And the reason why that is is because even if I, and you'll, this will make more sense later, but even if I pick one pin, um, it won't stay picked, it'll drop back down. Getting a little ahead of myself, so I'll come back to this later. But just know that if all the pins are binding, the lock would not be able to be manipulated over. Okay. Um, in the real world, there is flaws in the manufacturing process. The locks wear over time. Most locks are manufactured in brass, which is a uh, uh, malleable material that does deform. Um, you can see this is during the manufacturing process. This extra material moved, was removed on the side of the, of the uh, drill hole there. Um, and they're not exactly, if you draw a line down the center, they're not exactly even. Um, 
there's a picture of some pins, you can see there is some material missing. Uh, just a lot of imperfections in general. And these imperfections are what allow us to manipulate a lot of So, this is you know, more of a real life example. If I were to draw a line right down the center of the club there again, uh, the pins would not be aligned perfectly. The, the drill holes would not be aligned perfectly with, uh, with the uh, line that I drew. And in this circumstance, my fourth pin stack has the largest delta. And I know that because I'm going to apply tension to my plug, and only one of my pins are going to have the majority of the, the torque that I'm applying to my uh, tension wrench. It's going to be exerted on usually either you know, one or two pins only. Um, and this is called the binding pin. So, in this circumstance, my fourth pin stack is the binding pin. Um, you apply tension and define the binding pin. You go in with a pick and you lift up each pin stack individually while applying tension. The pin stack that is, has the most resistance or is the hardest to move up with your pick will is considered the, is the binding pin. Um, when you Kind of the essence of lock picking is being able to identify the binding pin, uh, pick the binding pin, and know that the binding pin has been picked. And what happens is either you'll feel something, you'll feel a, a kind of a vibration. Um, a lot of times you'll hear a clicking noise. Um, you might even the plug. You might even feel the plug turn, you know, a degree, or you might see it turn a full degree. And once you pick that binding pin, you move on to the next binding pin. So you go back through with your, with your pick, lift up each pin stack individually um, until you find the pin stack with the most resistance, push it up really slowly and delicately. If you have too much tension with your, with your tension wrench, then it won't, it won't move up at all, right? So maybe you let up on the tension a little bit. Um, if it's like impossible to push up at all, then you're you're probably not pushing it up, and you're pushing it up something else. Questions? So, um, it is possible to lift a pin stack up too high. You lift a pin stack up too high, and what happens is you push the key pin up into the Bible area, and that's for the lock area. This piece on a, on a key and knob cylinder is called the Bible. So you're pushing your, your uh, key pin into the Bible, and then, it, and then it starts to bind at the shear line. And you know that's happened because that pin won't fall back down into the keyway. Um, when you have picked a pin correctly, the, the key pins will fall back down into the keyway, and when you use your pick and kind of feel for it, and a, a push up on it, um, you won't get any spring tension. Usually that means you've picked that pin. Um, if you push it up and it gets stuck, then the only thing to do is to really start from scratch, you know, release tension on the lock, jiggle a little bit to start over, or just let up on the tension a little bit so that it, uh, so that the, pick, the pin stack resets itself. Questions? Yeah. Thank you. Right. The only reason why the pin stack stays up at the shear line is because basically the plug is turning a little bit. And there's a tiny ledge that's created, and that top pin is sitting on the, on that ledge. So another thing that could happen is you can put, you can push the uh, key pin up and the key pin, and, but not enough to pick the cell to pick that pin stack. So I push this one up, and then what happens is I didn't, I didn't push it up high enough, and then what, what it would do is it would get stuck kind of at the shear line, and the key pin will still fall back down, but you still have to pick that pin stack. And to fix that, you just have to go back in and manipulate that for a second again later. Yeah. So she asked, uh, how do you know that you're hitting a single pin stack or you're not hitting multiple pin stacks at once? Um, it's a good question. I mean, it's just practice. Yeah. So, you know, 
I'll show you an exercise that you can do to basically teach yourself how to fit lots of things like an hour to go from the hardest to the easiest to the hardest. Um, so, so you get a better understanding, but really it's, it's practice and understanding so each lock is different, but they also have a lot of similarities. So I'll go through the lock. So she asks where to start when you're picking. Um, every lock has its own signature. So, you know, in this lock, the fourth pin binds first. Some locks the fourth pin not bind first. You know, every lock is different. And even two locks made by the same manufacturer, same model, uh, will, will be completely different in terms of how you fit. That's why locking is fun, because every lock is different, every lock is a challenge, they're all different, basically puzzles in a way. So, if you buy a pick set um, from the table over there, there's usually three different styles of picks. There's uh, your feeler pick, uh, your half diamond, and then your rake. And rakes come in all different sizes, colors, flavors, and they all uh, are pretty much garbage. So if you have a rake in your, in your pick set, you can throw it away. Um, I don't like teaching raking because it's kind of a violent way, and I see a lot of people just out there like, you know, literally scrubbing the hell out of their lots uh, with these picks because they're not doing it correctly. So what, what I've been talking about in this presentation is about single pin picking, identifying the binding pin, picking that binding pin, moving on. Um, breaking is there's a lot more luck involved, a lot less skill, um, and I mean, yeah, exactly, exactly. Half diamond, you can use it as a feeler pick, like the pick we've been, like the uh, like this pick here. It's called a feeler or a hook. What's up? Like a feeler or a hook, you can use the same style. You can use a feeler or hook. Another thing to do with the uh, half diamond, I usually do the first thing I do when I pick up a new lock is I take my half diamond, I turn it upside down, and I push it all the way up to the top of the keyway. Um, so I'm raising all those springs up as far as they can go, and then I just pull out, and I, one by one, I pull out, put up to my ear, pull out that pick, and I hear the pins slamming down in the keyway. And what that tells me is how many pins are in the log, it kind of gives me a better visual of where they are in the log. Um, pins in the logs are usually more towards the front of the log than they are towards the back of the log. And, you know, I see a lot of people have their picks all the way into the log, and sometimes they don't realize it, but they're coming up the back of the log. You know, they're not doing anything to do that, so, you know, you get a better understanding of what's going on with um, Types of tension. If you're right-handed, the uh, best way to apply tension is like I showed you earlier, index finger all the way out in the palm of your hand, of your left hand. Uh, if you're left-handed, then you're probably already screwed. So. Also, look at this picture. This, is, this guy's applying tension, tension wrench. Uh, and then look at the next picture. Look at his finger. He's applying too much tension on the lock, basically. Um, if you look at your hand and there's a giant indention, uh, there's no blood in that finger anymore. Um, blood up a little bit when you're trying to apply. Um, usually we say, you know, hit as much tension as it takes to press down a key on a piano. Uh, usually it's a little more than that. But like I said earlier, every lock is different. They all require different amounts of tension. Some locks require an enormous amount of tension, or that would be okay. But stuff you're going to find out on the table here, uh, the lighter, the better. And that's also something you're going to have to get used to as well. Um, if you have applied too much tension, you're going to be doing a lot of oversetting, like I showed you earlier, where you push that key pin up into the Bible and it gets stuck. So to avoid that, not too much tension, these are uh, they're mechanical objects, but um, they still require a, a genuine amount of finesse. Um, and because of that, interestingly enough, females are usually better pickers right off the bat than males are. I don't know if it's something to do with the dexterity of, of, of females in general. Or, so, uh, don't get upset if the girl beats you. Right? <laughs> Different places to put tension wrench. Uh, the majority of locks out here would be fine. You put them at the bottom of the keyway. Uh, another style is putting it at the top of the keyway. You need a special uh, tension wrench that's a little thicker to put at the top of the keyway. The thing about putting tension wrench at the top of the keyway is it provides a much more uniform uh, rotational torque on the plug. Whereas if you put it in the bottom of the keyway, not only are you have an extra resistance of the, of the, of the uh, head of the tension wrench, um, the 
being applied to the, to the lock body. Uh, you're also in a lot of these cheap locks, or most locks you see, like on your front door, etc. Um, the plug isn't uh, um, perfectly snug inside the lock itself. It's very loose. And what happens when you apply tension? Um, instead of applying nice rotational force, you're going to apply tension in this direction, um, and it's going to actually push the plug into the wall of the lock instead of applying that nice uniform uh, torque. Does that make sense? So top tension is good if you can, but you know, when you're learning, bottom tension is okay. Just know that if, if you're having trouble, it's okay to move the round where you put your tension. Um, some people say picking locks is all about the tension uh, and your, your pick, you know, does a lot less. Well, that's not what they say, but it's something along the lines. <laughs> Basically, um, the tension really is the key. Um, it, it's knowing when to release tension, knowing when to apply more, when to apply less, uh, when to start from scratch. Usually when I'm picking a lock, I release it. If I picked it within 30 seconds, I release tension and I start over because I guarantee I overset a pin um, something along the lines. Oh no, you're leaving? Yeah, no, I said thanks for staying. Oh, for watching. Uh, different types of tension tools. Just with just like with picks, which are, you know, what pick you use, what style of pick you use, all based on preference. As long as you're not using a rake, uh, tension tools are the same way. Uh, there's a million different styles, but they all do the same thing. It's just based on preference. So this slide is to demonstrate that you have a little bit more uh, room to put your pick in when you use top tension. Um, but it's up to you. So which way to turn the lock? Padlocks, 90% of the time, open clockwise, always open clockwise, and they can't open, they, they, they won't even turn in the other direction. Um, your key and knob cylinder will turn both ways. Uh, it just depends on the style of the lock. The way it's installed, if, it, if it's a left-handed door, um, it might turn uh, left. If it's a right-handed door, it might turn right. It depends on, um, just the same thing with deadbolts, it depends on not only the lock manufacturer, but uh, the style of door it's being installed. So the deadbolts will turn both directions, so they will pick both directions, but only the correct direction will activate the bolts. Um, so if you Pick a lock the wrong way, it doesn't open the bolts, then close it and pick it in the other direction. So, yeah? Um, so, like, anytime I've used, like, on the door, is it one way will unlock it, turning it another way will lock it? Is that, is that standard or what's. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you said which one, you said normally the key will, one direction will unlock, another direction will lock. Um, on most American made locks, that's pretty common. But Plenty of European locks that will lock and unlock in the same direction, so they turn on 360 degrees. Just again, there's no, just no real standards in a lot of this stuff. Uh, there's a lot of uh, difference. So, the best way to learn, and I've done this with a school of deaf children, not joking, I've done this with blind people. Um, it's a really cool thing to do because anybody can learn how to do it. Uh, as long as you have, well, you know, fingers, but I'm sure you can use your fingers. Uh, sorry, I hope that's not offensive. Anyways, so basically what you do is you start with a, 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 a cylinder and you remove all of the, of the, um, the uh, pin stacks except for one. So basically you only have one pin stack to pick before the lock will open. And on these tables out here, there's locks that say number one, number two, number three. That's how many pin stacks are in the lock. So this would be a number one, one pin stack. Next thing you do is you move on to a number two. Uh, if, you, if you can't find any locks out here and you want to do this at home, um, there's plenty of resources online. Uh, my favorite is the Lock Sport International Guide to Lock Picking. It'll teach you how to make a progressively pinned uh, um, set so that you have your own you know, single pin stack lock, double pin stack lock, etc. And you start with the first one and you work your way up. In one hour, you will go from picking a one pin lock to a six pin lock, no problem. I guarantee it. It's that easy. Lock picking is really easy and it's really fun, but you know, it's, it's not, it's something that uh, you have to do, um, teach yourself if 
correct way. Because you can spend a lot of time you know, fiddling and, and, and applying too much tension and not getting anywhere. Um, and sometimes you know, you'll be trying really, really hard, your hands will hurt, uh, and then someone will strike up a conversation and all of a sudden you'll, you'll uh, relax and you don't realize you're still picking the lock and then all of a sudden it opens. And you're like, oh, I fucking opened the lock, but I wasn't even paying attention. It's because you're trying too hard. So relax. Uh, yeah, I mean, think about kitties or something. And when you get the lock open, you scream open so everybody knows that you've opened the lock. 